Welcome to this webinar, which provides insights into how primary teachers can build on the work of early learning and care settings in promoting equality, diversity, and supporting the inclusion of young children in the primary education system. These insights take account of research and are drawn from inspectors' findings in early learning and care settings, as well as the guidance provided by inspectors to promote improvement. All of the advice provided in this webinar should be considered in light of the prevailing public health guidelines which apply in educational settings. The primary curriculum builds on children's experiences of ASHTER, the Early Childhood Curriculum Framework. The primary curriculum is broad and it offers the choice in the selection and sequencing of content. It also focuses on the developmental needs of children. This ensures that it is adaptable to the diversity of children's circumstances and experiences. This supports the inclusion and meaningful participation of and equality of opportunity for all children, irrespective of their gender, religion, culture, ability, age, ethnicity or family background. As young children transfer from early learning and care settings to primary school, it is very beneficial for teachers to take time to read the Moshgale transition reports provided by early years practitioners. These reports help teachers to understand the children's interests, strengths, needs and learning dispositions. Professional conversation with practitioners before and after the transition of the children also help to identify and accommodate individual needs and interests. Do give the children time to get to know you and the other children. Gradually introduce them to new play and learning opportunities in the school environment, both indoors and outdoors. Play alongside the children to get to know their play likes and dislikes. This will help you to promote positive self-esteem and self-worth. We will now explore how the preparation of an attractive, welcoming learning environment can promote equality, diversity and support the inclusion of young children in the primary education system. This will help all children to feel a sense of identity and belonging in the classroom. In early learning and care settings, the children experience learning environments that are attractive, interesting and very well laid out with cosy spaces. Most notably, the learning environments feature distinct interest areas which are often tailored to the children's interests and include lots of natural and open-ended materials which are accessible to every child. Infant classrooms very often replicate this provision. Ideally, the learning environment needs to provide opportunities for children to move, to explore and think, to be creative and to progress in their learning. Materials which reflect the children's interests can be thoughtfully added to the environment. These promote creativity, thinking and problem solving skills, questioning, experimentation and open-ended play. Resources, including natural materials where possible, should be accessible to all children, including those with disabilities, in as far as is possible. To this end, it is helpful to have low level shelves for storage. Boxes of equipment can be labelled using pictures or photographs and as the children progress, they may read words related to the play equipment. We will now move on to consider how classroom displays and resources can really support the children's sense of identity and belonging. In high quality early learning and care settings, practitioners use photographic and visual displays such as All About Me and Family Walls to celebrate the children's identity. These displays can also celebrate the people who have special significance for them, including their pets, as well as the children's efforts and achievements. 
Such displays prompt the children's natural curiosity about similarities and difference in family structure. These approaches are often replicated in primary school. The primary language curriculum encourages teachers to embrace the multilingual classroom and foster increased learning and awareness about language for all children. By including books written in the first language spoken in the children's home in the classroom library, the children can really celebrate, promote and value the children's home languages. Teachers can also learn and display important words, rhymes or songs in languages other than that of the school. Teachers can invite parents to share information, visual resources and items from their culture, backgrounds and traditions. And teachers can encourage parents and indeed grandparents to become involved in school in different ways and at a pace that suits them. Inspectors recognise the value of books and resources that challenge traditional gender stereotypes and resources that accurately reflect cultural and ethnic diversity. These may include puzzles, posters, dolls and real life items. By placing cooking and eating utensils that reflect those used in the children's home, in the home area and the classroom, the teacher can support an understanding of cultural diversity. This really good practice is equally valuable in the junior infant classroom. Intercultural education in the primary school guidelines remind us that this helps children to understand that this breadth of human life enriches us all. We will now consider how teachers can support equality, diversity, inclusion and awareness of others. Inspectors often commend the use of visual supports and auditory resources such as pictorial timetables and schedules, choice boards, bells and clocks to support all of the children to understand the daily classroom routine. A small number of children will require support to connect with their peers and to be included in playful scenarios. By playing alongside the child, you can tune in to what other children are doing and suggest ideas. For example, oh look, the children are in the hairdressers. We could ask for an appointment too. Or, look, Ben and Ali are cooking dinner. Let's see if we can help them. Clear expectations of behaviour and tasks help to promote consistency and predictability for children. It's important to develop a set of classroom rules in collaboration with the children to generate a shared understanding how they manage themselves and interact with each other in a manner that supports the inclusion of all children. Some children may not understand what is required of them and therefore rules have to be explicitly taught and reinforced using visual cues. Teachers can help to reduce conflict by being clear on rules regarding turn taking. You can also help children to be empathetic by encouraging them to look at things from another child's perspective. Regular conversations with the children will help you to create a learning environment that helps the children to be comfortable with human difference and help them to think critically about diversity and bias. It is really important to actively model positive interactions. When conflicts arise, try to avoid solving the problem for the children. Rather, step back and encourage the children to acknowledge difficult situations, stand up for themselves and each other in these situations, and to resolve conflicts themselves, offering support and modeling conflict resolution strategies as needed. The children often surprise us with their problem solving capacities. Learning which is informed by the interests of the child is a strong feature of inclusive practice in early years education. Inspectors often describe how the child's voice is represented when they have the opportunity to talk about and influence their own learning journey during informal conversations or planned group discussions. 
Practitioners observe the children's actions are nonverbal cues to capture their voice. Observation of nonverbal cues is particularly beneficial when supporting children who may not yet communicate verbally or whose home language is not the one predominantly spoken in the setting. By allowing children to make decisions, including offering choice over what they learn, teacher can support the children's motivation, confidence, well-being and positive learning dispositions. The children understand that their voice is respected, their opinions are listened to and their interests valued and acted upon in the classroom. Inspectors often detail how practitioners interpret children's creative expression to acknowledge their interests, thoughts and their feelings. This might be through dance activities, art and music, or highly commendable practice is observed. Inspectors often see children's thoughts and ideas transcribed on samples of their mark making, in recorded observations and in their learning portfolios. By listening to and respecting the child's voice, teachers can meaningfully develop learning experiences that are child initiated and child led. Circle time can be used to encourage children to discuss their interests or their ideas for learning activities. These discussions will also help you to understand the needs of more able children and plan additional challenges for them. The inclusive classroom is responsive to each child's individual strengths and needs and it supports learning for all. The inclusive education framework for primary schools builds on guidelines to support diversity, equality and inclusion in early learning and care settings and recognise that planning for individual needs is an essential part of a whole school policy on inclusion. The Better Start Access and Inclusion model supports children with additional needs to access and meaningfully participate in the Early Childhood Care and Education Programme. Similar to the continual support in primary schools, which operates a three-staged approach to assessment and intervention, classroom support for all, school support for some, and school support plus for a few children, AIM operates along a continuum, providing a suite of universal and targeted supports across seven levels. To support a young child with very significant needs in an early learning and care setting, an AIM Early Year Specialist works with setting leaders, Leadership for Inclusion Coordinator and Early Years Practitioners in drawing up an individual plan for the child. In some instances, Specialist equipment is supplied to support a young child who may be encountering challenges in the early learning and care environment for various reasons. And these could be mobility difficulties, sensory sensitivities, or social and communication difficulties. Additional practitioners may be employed to further support a child in the learning environment who has significant challenges in participating in learning activities or in having calm, comfortable learning experiences. To support consistency of experience for the child, it is really important that the junior infant teacher is aware of the children's strengths, needs and specialist areas of interest and understands the aim, plans and supports that were in place in the early learning and care setting. Insofar as is possible, these supports need to be replicated in the junior infant classroom. Ideally, before the child starts in primary school, teachers should review the individual access and inclusion plan with the link coordinator and the child's key person from the early learning and care setting, the child's parents and the child him or herself, as well as the assessment data generated about the child. This will allow time to access relevant supports such as assistive technology or a special needs assistant where deemed necessary by the local special educational needs organiser or CINO. Strong, respectful partnership with parents are essential for inclusive practice. 
Get to know the children's parents and caregivers too by making a special effort to speak with them regularly. Parents are an important source of information about the child's current interests. It is good to have regular communication with them. In highly effective early learning and care settings and in primary schools, parents are regularly invited to contribute to their child's learning portfolio and some learning experiences are developed as a direct result of information from parents. For instance, learning stories showcasing the arrival of a new baby sibling or art activities to celebrate a significant cultural event are indicative of effective home setting communication. These activities all support a sense of inclusion, identity and belonging. To communicate with parents whose first language is not English, inspectors note that it is beneficial to engage interpreters or to communicate messages through symbols, images or photographs as appropriate. Where early learning and care and primary provision is most inclusive, inspectors often note that the setting or the school is at the heart of the community. Take a minute to look at some examples of how primary schools develop links with the local community. This gives children a strong sense of identity and belonging. Here is a list of further information and resources which may support you as you explore the themes of equality, diversity and inclusion in your school. As we conclude, we thank you for listening. We hope this webinar provides helpful advice. If you have queries or comments, please email us using the dedicated email address insights underscore info at education.gov.ie. We would like to sincerely thank the primary schools and the early learning and care settings for sharing beautiful images with us for this webinar. Slam.